Passion for fashion. Passion for fashion. Passion for fashion. Congrats. Congrats. A doll line that debuted in 2001 with a passion for fashion. I don't think the brats need an intro because they're iconic, and if you're watching this, I'm sure you already know an uncomfortable amount about them. And just like any other toy line meant to drag kids and 30-year-old men to Toys R Us, they have a bunch of animated media. The Bratz TV series aired in 2005. It features the core Bratz doll lineup of Chloe, Jade, Sasha, and Yasmin as they run a fashion magazine and go up against Your Thing magazine run by Birdine and the Tweevils. Chloe is a dramatic athletic one. Sasha is a hip girl boss. Alonce is way super styling. And check out that ink. Now that's scorching. Should be the most groovalicious sleepover ever. Girlfriend 411. Major eyesores ahead. Yasmin is smart and shy while Jade is artsy and I guess the emotional one. We always see her sad in episodes about her, but I don't know if that's the writing or her voice actor, Soleil Moonfry's constant vocal fry sad voice. My life is so over. <laughs> the whole voice cast for this show is stacked with Tia Maori as Sasha, Olivia Hack as Chloe, and Diane Kwan as Yasmin. And these voice actors are voice acting. May I help you? All the voice actors got changed to Canadians when season two aired, but even then, they had big names who I guess were smaller names back then, like Ashley Ball and Tabitha St. Germain. The new set of voice actors pretty much impersonate the original voice actors, and they do a scarily good job at it. I just know Elamina is innocent. I gotta say, I'm with Byron. The evidence is too solid. We just need to make sure she acted alone. I'll talk to some of the models, see if they have any ideas on accomplices. Byron and I are going to search Elamina's house for the antidote. Finally, I'll get into that club. Ah, oh, I bet I can run my 10K. My history paper will be a breeze. I'll come up with a great new design for the Nature Fashion Showcase. I didn't even realize they all changed except for Sasha. They're not bad, but I just think the original was too iconic. At the same time though, Twitch's 2 had just come out, so I understand if it was hard for Tia Maori to act after that magnum opus. Kaylee Cuoco voices Christy and Lacey Chabert is Casey, aka the Tweevils. The Tweevils are identical twins, and since this is a cartoon, that means they're both dumb with one being a little bit smarter. They exist to meddle the girls and are easily the best part of the show. Oh, Berdine is so meany weeny. And Kirsty and Casey are so nasty wasty. <laughs> Can you believe Berdine? Everything about her is like so plastic. Totally. She reminds me of that fashion doll that used to hit me with when we were three. The way you spaz his dress. What are you gonna call it? Teen Hurl? <laughs> yeah. You see, let's get out of here before they do something to me. Ow! My nose! They work for the Brass Survival magazine, Your Thing, led by the clear Barbie parody, Berdine. She loves everything pink, hates the brats, doesn't eat carbs, and is voiced by Wendy Malik, whose check was not big enough for this. Carbs! What are you trying to do? Kill me? Make me fat? I only eat greens! But I- Bear me your excuses, you are fired, hear me? Fired! And not only will you never ever work at this magazine again. You will never ever work at any magazine. Am I making myself quite clear? You are fired for life. In fact, even your children and your grandchildren are fired! 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 Which is also probably why she didn't come back for season two. Fired! Moving on to the boys, there's Dylan. He gets a good amount of screen time and sometimes his own subplots. He was one of the more popular male dolls that would reappear in line, so I guess that's why he pops up often. But I never liked him because he wasn't that funny and the other guy characters, Etan and Cameron, show up a lot less than him. Although they have more of a reason to because they're direct love interest to Chloe and Yasmin. There's a whole bunch of smaller supporting characters that reoccur based on the plot, like Byron, who's a Simon Cowell parody because it's the 2000s, but I'll go more into them later. Season 1 is on the rougher side for both animation and writing. Plot-wise, there isn't much to say, because there isn't really a plot. It's normal cartoon stuff, the Bratz girls have a problem, and then all the other characters get involved in some way. They use typical kids show plots like, oh, a magic necklace that gives us good luck. Dylan has to enter a contest in drag, because once again, it's the 2000s. Although these plots are basic, what matters is how they change it up, and sometimes it's bad enough where you can laugh ironically, but as someone who watched these episodes back to back, I was dying. The episodes are poorly written and they're not that funny besides occasional one-off lines. 
But halfway through, when I reach Bewitched, Bothered, and Birdeen, things change. In this episode, the girls are fighting over who should go accept an award, so Birdeen uses a hypnotization device so Jade and Sasha can go ruin the speech and the magazine's standing. But before that, she gets them to try to murder Chloe and Yasmin, eventually trapping them in cement, which they break out of using exfoliation cream. Then, Chloe and Yasmin fistfight Birdeen before freeing Jade and Sasha. This episode is insane. I had no idea what was going to happen. It's creative and fun throughout, not just one thing that's said for me to use in an out-of-context Twitter meme. After this, they fought between normal less from the week episodes and nonsensical fun episodes. One of the worst episodes is a little this, a little that that shows a lot of the bad sides of the show, and one of the best is Jade's dream that shows all the good sides. They're both Jade Center episodes because she's my favorite, and this is my video. And a little this and a little that, Jade tries to hang out with the girls, but everyone's busy. They all have bad days while they're gone and meet up to talk about how terrible it was, and they're happy Jade didn't have to experience it. But uh uh-oh, Jade overhears and confuses this for them hating her. So of course, she decides to run away and cry. Meanwhile, Birdine is sick of the Tweevils being bad at their job and fires them, hiring a new assistant. The Tweevils and Jade cry together and become friends. Let's take our pictures in one of those teeny tiny picture booths. Yeah, then let's drink a whole bunch of root beer and have a burp off. (laughs) What? Don't girlfriends do that? Every person is different, Casey. And if you want to have a burp off, that's okay with me. There you go, being nice again. <laughs> it's like almost starting to feel natural. But eventually the brats make up and the Tweevils overhear their conversation and think Jade's dissing them. So then they stop being friends with her and then go back to Berdine who hates her new assistant. And the episode just ends. The way that the conflict in this episode is so poorly written and easy to solve, the goofy animation at times, and the weird, inconsistent characterization. What do you mean? It was that easy for the Tweebles to be nice all along. Meanwhile, in the Jade's Dream episode, Jade gets discouraged from reading mean fan letters. So, she goes to see a psychic to reassure herself, but the psychic, who's also Berdine, instead tells her that she'll ruin the magazine in the future. So, she runs away to cry again, but gets hit by the dumpster because there's a windstorm all of a sudden, and has a dream that Berdine is taking over the world by turning everything pink. The brats are superheroes in her dream, so they try to stop her, but then they get turned into Tweebles. potion was supposed to destroy, not disfigure. Hey, Kirsty, what are we like doing over there? Oh my gosh, we've been tweevalized! <laughs> and Cameron is somehow the only non-pink person still alive, and he encourages Jade to go save them. She then turns Berdine's dog into a tweevil and promotes her inflation fetish by having Berdine eat carbs, which cause her to explode. She realizes that through that dream, her purpose is to stay with the brats and the magazine. This is when the show is good. There's insane shit happening one after the other. It literally takes a minute for Jade to go from reading mean fan letters to being knocked out by a rogue dumpster. While fighting Berdine, the brats literally get bombed and missile attacked. The whole episode is just fun and it's goofy and it's fun to watch. The second season increased the amount of insane episodes and the frequency of them. Like Alien Encounters, where everyone is Stylesville, yes, that is the name of their town, and yes, they go to Styles High, gets mind controlled by aliens, and I'm not even going to describe this episode, just look at it. Uh, refresh me, what exactly is your plan? Oh, in the four-chambered stomach of your creature known as cow, we discovered a high-fiber vegetation rich in cellulose, the miracle vegetation called high. This is camp that only brats could get away with. When it comes to the animation, if you're watching this video, then you're probably used to the brat style. But looking at it objectively, the brat doll designs are a little bit rough. Just stare at some screenshots and their dead, lifeless eyes and alien heads start to hypnotize you. 2D versions of the brats were always strange because their huge lips look like they're about to fall off and their lack of noses creates the weirdest proportions. I definitely think this being CGI was a better choice, but that doesn't mean it's good CGI. 
The show was animated by Mike Young Productions, who also made Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You, did the animation for Norm of the North, and that Michael Jackson homage Halloween movie, so I think that portfolio says enough about them. All the characters have really shiny and animated hair, but the hair just defies physics and gravity and flies around everywhere. They don't have a lot of expressions because they can't emote with their eyes or face in general, and their heads bobble whenever they speak. But that doesn't even compare to the movement. If their movement isn't jagged and rough, it's completely uncontrolled. Every action scene just has their limbs floating around. Sorry, Damon, but these heels are just murder on the feet. I guess... It looked good for the time, maybe. I also think they made a bad choice by trying to make them look exactly like the dolls because the dolls aren't made to emote. They're made to always be serving cunt, which doesn't work when animating. In season two, I'd say it got better though. The animation is a lot smoother. There seems to be logic behind how they move. They aren't as stiff and awkward because their eyes can finally express a little and there's a lot more camera angles. In the first season, they love to randomly give crooked angles, and that's the only angle change we ever get. But in season two, there's more variety because they finally learn that they can pan the camera and do it in different ways. The show also has its little quirks. It loves its sound effects. They also change the girls' outfits in each episode, and some of them are directly taken from the doll line. Personally, I think there's nothing more exciting than a new outfit change in a girls' cartoon, so I really enjoyed that. They also like to break the fourth wall with the brass cutting to the camera to express their thoughts or give cutaway gags. And I don't know why they do this. It's just the girl saying gross to the scene that we know is gross or saying that they're nervous in a scenario where we already know they're nervous. And sometimes they're so quick and random that it literally feels like a jump scare. Yeah. Another quirk they have is reusing character models a lot. We have Prudence, Tiffany, Callie, and Fiona. They reused this one model four times throughout the show and movies, and I literally thought all these girls were the same person as a kid and never understood why they kept coming back with new names. A part of me can't blame them though, because how are you supposed to tell them apart when they're based on dolls who also all look the same? Now you can say these girls don't really matter because they're smaller characters, but they reuse the same character model for more important characters too. Like we have Chachi who kidnaps Jade in one episode and then comes back as Jean-Paul who's a designer and friends with the brats. They literally couldn't even bother to change his suit color or make him look even the slightest bit like a different person. And you remember him because who's gonna forget this character design? And because he also reappears mid-season in the Cinderella episode as Cinderella's dad who dies from being fed too many carbs. The show and movies were also produced kind of at the same time. The show came out first with the Rock Angels airing as a direct-to-TV movie and then being released on DVD. After the first season ended in 2006, a bunch of brass straight-to-DVD movies came out and the second season started in 2008. So the movies that were made together with the show use the same character models, outfits, songs, and voice actors. So there's a lot of overlap and reusing the same stuff to make it easier. So I think they just lost track of which models were already used and for what. So they were probably just hoping kids wouldn't notice if a character in the show was just a completely different person. The most production mistakes come from the Bratz official channel though. This doesn't really have to do with the review, but I just have to talk about this. Because the Bratz channel has all the episodes and movies uploaded, but in a really weird way. The episodes are uploaded normally, but they have so many compilations that are filled with a random assortment of episodes. Alongside this, they have the movies randomly uploaded in these compilations too. Like parts of the Rock Angels movie is in multiple of these. The Off to Summer Camp video is really the Girls Really Rock movie. And a big discovery video is actually the Bratz Kids fairy tale movie. The Seven Dwarves? We prefer little people. And I know all these doll brands do this, like Monster High, Barbie, Ever After High. They all re-upload compilations of their old shows, but I'm pretty sure Bratz is the only one that has their movies uploaded in their entirety like five times. I know that they did this just to make money by people randomly clicking and watching, but the official playlist they have for season one is also in random order. The official channel also has it in widescreen, but it looks like they did this by stretching out the original video, so it's not even in the correct aspect ratio. I'll stick to my properly organized 360p uploads from 11 years ago split up into three parts. Thank you very much. The Bratz dolls and this show have gotten a lot of flack for being bad role models. They dress provocatively, have big lips, eat hot Cheetos, and lie. I think the Funkin' Glow commercial really shows the reputation they had back then among parents, where we see the girls in their slutty glory going to the club. Of course this isn't true, and I don't think the Bratz are sluts, but this idea was just pushed because they dressed in a way that showed skin above the navel. The overall message of the Bratz and the show was expressing yourself and doing what you want. The Cinderella episode I mentioned before I have to bring up again because I always loved the ending. 
at the end of the episode, Yasmin gets her prince. But she ultimately decides that she doesn't want to marry him and she wants to do her own thing now that she has freedom. No. 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 Her doing this isn't shown in a way where the idea of her ending up with the prince is a bad thing, nor is she treated like some trailblazing girl boss for not choosing him. Which for 2005 is an incredibly nuanced take of the ending of Cinderella. And I think the brats have always sort of been ahead of their time for this. You can be a whore, you can be a girl boss, or both. They don't care. So take that, you angry parents who posted mean reviews for this show back in 2008. So to wrap it up, the Bratz TV show. Pretty okay. It has good moments. It has bad moments. When it's good, it's okay. When it's bad, it's really bad. Growing up, I couldn't afford any dolls. The first time I entered a Toys R Us was at eight years old when I went to buy a doll with all the money I had saved on my own. So I love this show because it combined my love of cartoons with my love of dolls. So it also had a special place in my heart and I'm happy I could watch it back again and tell you all that it was okay. But to really end this video, I want to mention the best part about this show. Fist fights! Literally every other episode there's a fist fight and I love it. They're full on wrestling. Chloe never holds back. She jump anyone who gets in her way. This is so badass of them. We need more hand-to-hand -hand combat in girls cartoons just once. I want to see Bloom body slam somebody. They don't just give punches either. They take them too. They get beat up a lot and sick. Jay, look out!